Hi, everybody. I'm Tessa. I'm a writer for the Winter Play, and we're going to be discussing like the other writers' process for making their scenes and get a little behind the scenes with that. So if everyone could introduce themselves by their name and their grade, that'd be great. Hi, I'm Michaela Allen, and I'm a junior. Hi, I'm Joseph Francis. I'm a junior. Hi, I am Nolan J. Olson, and I'm a junior. The J's for junior. I'm Ethan Rhodes, and I'm a junior. I'm Layla, and I'm a sophomore. I am Abraham Ortiz, and I am a senior. And pretty soon. So Parker, if you could just say, I mean, obviously we know your name now, but if you could say your name and your grade, that'd be great. I'm Parker and I'm a junior. Nice. So, <laughs> so now that we know everybody, our first question is going to be, where do you begin your process for writing a scene? Like when they say, okay, you have to have this done by this time. What's your first step with making your winter play scene? Um, I generally come up with a weird character or a concept. And uh, I know last year we did a lot of this as a group, but there wasn't much of a thing for that this year. So it was more just like a weird concept I came up with. So like last year I came up with like, what if you could buy dads at a warehouse? And then that became a skit. And then this year I was like, what if there was a toenail fairy instead of the tooth fairy? And then I like put that in my skit. So I generally come up with a concept and then move off of that. For me, it kind of depends on, like, uh, what I'm being inspired by at the time. But this time, we asked, like, our group members, like, hey, what do you want the scene to be about? And then we were, like, kind of throwing around ideas. And someone was like, what if we talked about, like, movies and, like, parodied trailers? Or, like, uh, I think it, it started out as genres, specifically. We wanted to parody movie genres. And so someone was like, yeah, what if we talked about, like, movie genres and all that? And they're like, well... I mean, what if we did something with trailers? And we just kind of followed that train of thought until we decided to make a trailer spoof, unlike how all trailers are mostly, like, how trailers are kind of all the same. And they're just, like, we're just going to make fun of trailers and, like, that kind of sort of thing. And then after that, I just started thinking about different things that trailers do that are the same, like the intense music that goes, like, and then something happens and someone says something arbitrarily random, like, you have to get over the wall, run! And so I just started following that whole situation and just, um, yeah, that kind of thing. And so it went off of that and you just start making jokes off of that entire thing. And I just, what really made it come together was when I got the music for it. Because once you got the music on the background, then you can really see what the heck you want to say, when you want to say it and how long everything's going to be. So it's a process. I kind of had like a vague idea of, I had the lines that I wanted to be said first and I put it in a time frame, and then I put, the music over it and then from there I went okay how long can I actually have this and like what actually fits and so after that it was just kind of condensing it down into how much can I actually put in there and what works and what doesn't. Nice and Parker I know you were um, mentioning also about like how we worked as a group with our cast members to discuss the concept of our scene so for all of you guys um how was it, I know not everyone here has written for the winter play before, but what was it like getting to actually meet your cast members before you wrote your scene? I actually was gonna mention how, for me, I based my skit around who was in my cast. Like I had my, we all came up, I came up the concept before I even got my group. I knew I wanted to do it for a long time. I was inspired by like, our daily choir class. But I was like, when I saw who was in my group, I really based the characters around their ability of what they could do and what they strive into because to really really fuel them into wanting to actually do it and feel comfortable and expressing, like really getting to know like what the winter play is and how fun it is. So basing the character around their skills was really beneficial for the group as a whole. And us like, actually, like, we got things done a lot faster in that way because they also like, took the character in their own perspective and like really like, made it their own. Yeah, and I know for my scene as well, what we did is we had them read through like past shows. And then we, like you said, we listed their the things they were good at. And then if they had played a certain role a lot of times, we tried, sometimes we tried to do something completely different from that. So no, one girl in my scene, uh, she she's often like the villain person. So this time we tried to make her more of like the sweet old lady. So like completely opposite from that. 
Um, Parker, did you have something? Um, as far as what, uh, well, it was one nice to meet the people that we were working with because then you know who's going to be like what their skill sets are when we had them read through all their scripts. And it was just kind of fun learning their skill set before doing it because that way you know how far you can go with uh, your script. Because if you don't know their skill level, you either are going to undershoot it or overshoot it and how complicated it's going to be. And so maybe you didn't know that you had like these amazing actors and you like wrote a very simple script. You're like, oh, we could have done so much more with this. Or you'll write something that you think they can handle. And then it's kind of like, maybe we should draw this back just a little bit. So, you know, there's this way we have a set idea of what we're working with here. And going along with like deciding who plays who, what, how do you guys decide the names of your characters and your scenes? I feel like that's often like a really fun thing to help characterize the person. So what do you guys do for that? I don't want to keep talking about, at least for my scene, I had like really different names at least because I was, I was thinking, I was like, I want to have, for me, I picked like, like last names and like first names that resolve within like my culture and that really aren't expressed within a lot of plays and stuff. So I wanted to bring those names in and kind of like have them like, they're not like that crazy, but like having those names like incorporated in the skits, like kind of like, it took them a while to like get them a couple times. Like some names were like, how do you pronounce it? But like it took after a while, it kind of, they kind of like, they felt it, they really understood it, you know? And they, with those like different names, they actually kind of like recognized the characters like a little in a different way. And they kind of like connected more with it in a, some aspects. So that's why I feel like I developed the names like around the characters and like also like the cast. I'm, who knows where I'm going with this, but I, <laughs> this is my mental process. Yeah, so it's like their name is kind of like adding another personality trait and stuff like that. So I do think that's interesting. Um, Michaela, I think for your scene, what did you guys do? I know you based yours off of like some existing characters. So how did you guys do that? Yeah, ours is based off of fairy tale characters. So we tried to like not obviously like give them the same exact name, but like um, play off of like their general name. So a lot of them have like either the same or like very similar names, like pre existing fairy tale characters. But I think that helps in a way because like while they were trying to like do like a spin off of like those characters, it kind of helped them like relate to them, like find like the original personality traits that we were going for. Yeah, for sure. And how many, I know you were one of the writers for that scene. And who did you write that with? I wrote that with um, Ethan and Layla. Awesome. So what was it like getting to, because I know obviously it's it's one challenge, like writing a scene by yourself, but how is it like getting to collaborate with two other people? Layla, do you have any comments for that? Um, I'd say it was really easy getting our points across and what we really envisioned for our scene, but it was overall like really easy to communicate with um, Michaela and Ethan. And like, we, our scene was basically based off of um, what happened with the corona pandemic. So we had the same idea of what we wanted to write about and what the lines were, what each character was. So it really fit. That's awesome. Um, so another thing that we want to talk about is what tips you guys have for future winter play writers or just anyone who's looking to write in general. Um, and things that you found helpful throughout this process of creating your own scenes and characters? Um, a big thing, like, for me when writing is since, like, I started getting into theater by acting, I like to reverse engineer, kind of like I have this character, like how Nolan said, like, you have a character, you try to build something around it. But also just having the idea that, especially if you're doing a comedic thing like the winter play, or it depends on, like, what genre of writing you're doing, but perfection isn't entertaining and you have to like keep that in your brain so like creating characters that aren't perfect or you know have problems or you know just like some especially if it's comedy right they have uh you know traits and like quirks that like you don't really see that often but that's what makes it funny right if your character is very impulsive and says things like just like first thing that comes to their mind we all know a person that does that right so like finding traits that people like have but are rare because if you're like oh this person like breathes okay that's great but every person breathes so it's not that entertaining so for future planning when writing a big thing from acting because they always tell you is that like when you're like doing a monologue or you're doing this like having a perfect character doesn't really 
isn't really as entertaining only because of the fact that like you want to watch something because you want to see growth you want to see progression if your character is perfect from the start why do we want to invest and hope that they're going to get better when they're already at the best they've ever been I have something kind of similar to that. And my advice for writing is uh, get weird because just weird stuff is fun. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Like if you can include just like, I don't know. I, I might be the only person who finds this funny, but I think when there's a random, sad, emotional moment, just in the dead middle of something that's immediately cut short. I think that's so funny. Like if you write something you, that you will primarily enjoy, and that like other people can enjoy as well, then I think you've done well. Also uh, be knowledgeable of what the, uh, whatever you're writing for, what the boundaries of it are. So you don't need to make a lot of revisions because they don't like how weird you got. <laughs> I know for me, something I try to keep in mind is I really like watching interviews and stuff like that for my favorite TV shows. And the thing they talk about a lot is establishing your character. So it's like you can't have a good story without like the people in it, which is kind of touching on what you guys said, but that's also something I try to keep in mind. I think a good idea would be to have a good idea of what you're working with. Like with the winter play, um, <laughs> there's no like budget or anything. So I guess it's a good idea for when you're writing like, yes, yeah, shoot for the moon, but also remember what's possible and what's not and if you can figure out how to do it then figure out your workaround because there's almost always a workaround and i would say i'm gonna what helped me with writing was i read more plays um from like past plays that other people wrote and it really helped me just getting into that mindset of the kind of jokes they made or like what they were talking about or how long this monologue was or how long this person talked. So that really helped me to get a sense of what it was all about. But I mean, mostly just have fun with it. Make sure it's you. You don't have to force anything on anybody. You know, it's all you, it's your words, it's who you are. So don't like write anything that you think people will like. Cause if you like what you write, then others will like it too. And Layla, I know earlier you were talking about how your guys have seen like revolves around the whole um, Corona aspect and stuff. So how did you and everyone else, how did you guys uh, prepare to write your scenes for the screen rather than the stage? Um, I'd say it was, it was easier sort of because, I mean, actually it was harder because we had scenes, we also did scenes where we weren't in front of like a Zoom setting, like a camera setting. So we had scenes in our houses that we had to do. So that, that like connected a little bit with the stage aspect. But like over the Zoom, it was like a regular conversation, but we had, to, we had to focus more on our facial expressions rather than our whole body too. That was something we had to really work with and just projection, projecting our voice. That was something that was like a problem. <laughs> um, kind of going along with that because uh, that same scene and all that, um it was like kind of a big thing in our group to try to not just have a straight zoom setting right because it's like every new thing comes a new challenge right whether that be like uh if you're doing a stage production right if you're trying to write the next big stage production you don't you want something different you want something that's like here's why you should go see my show right if like going back all the way to hamilton it's almost like five six years ago now but like you know the selling point of we're rapping on stage like people are like oh my god that's so new and like so like interesting right so now you have this new medium for the winter play show and it's like okay you're not on stage and you're not doing like i don't know i always like i enjoyed the winter play because it was kind of like gags right like quick like quick props right here and like oh like that's interesting or like it, it was a stylistic thing. So now you have to try to get that same energy, but on the camera. And so I think a big thing with that was really just having people also like getting your group, like kind of in that same mindset, especially for people who haven't done the winter play. You're trying to tell them like, it's not meant to be perfect. It's not meant to, you know, be like, you know, a Broadway or like a, you know, movie production because it's meant to just be a, just a group of people coming together just to put a show on. So, yeah. 
I think one of my biggest issues with my group is I, I originally had my concept for an in-person performance. So having to change my concept to an online format really shifted the, the dynamic of what I wanted to do. And also with like, the filming process, it really took a toll trying to like really understand like, the mannerisms, the timing and everything with like the connection and everything. So it really took a big like toll on us. Like when writing, like trying to put like, what are we, what are our ideas and with like the availability of what we can do while filming. So it kind of was like a roadblock, but I feel like we all like went above and beyond with it and really like went with it and kind of like vibe with that. Like, you know, if we could make the best of it, it kind of like, it kind of almost made it more fun in that way. Cause we were all like, we were, it was like, we, it took, it made it more fun in the aspect that everyone was just there to have a good time. Like it was like, you know what, it's just, let's make the best of it. Let's just roll with it, do the script, have a good time. And that's why I really like this year's winter play and like how we wrote it like on the online format. Um, and also just a final thing is that we have some questions from the general public from Instagram. So um, our Instagram is at OHS underscore standing underscore O if you want to check that out. And um, the questions that we had from people were mainly what inspired your scene? I know Michaela, your group kind of talked about it a little, but if you want to say, or if anyone wants to say more about what inspired their scene, and also if you could say the name of your scene, um, that would be cool. So do we want to have, Michaela, do you want to start that off? Sure, okay. I know we talked about how our scene was based off of fairy tales and the title of our scene is like keeping up with the princesses of fantasy land. So we talked um, with our group like ahead of time, like what characters would be interested in playing and besides like fairy tales, they were like, oh, like reality TV would be cool. So we thought it'd be like an interesting way to incorporate like the like the pandemic and like how like people would relate to that. So it's kind of like um, the reality TV shows you would um, see like our titles would play off of like keeping up with the Kardashians. So we put like those like older like original fairy tale characters into like a new like modern setting and like that's kind of like how we ran with it, which I think kind of worked to our advantage on Zoom too because of like the interview type thing and so like the style of the show definitely helped us there. Um, I mean, well, for mine, mine was basically just because inspired off of just like the one topic of like of like the toenail fairy or whatever just like and then from then on I was like how else could I ruin uh, holiday mascots and so like we got like Santa post-divorce um he's a lot of fun he's really sad um but yeah so that just sort of where it came from and I don't know I had fun with it I I believe it should just be titled holiday mascots yeah And our final question for this discussion is going to be, why should people come and see Skits and Giggles Season 3? And do we, want, do we want to have Joseph start us off with this question? Um, the reason you should come see it is because, honestly, a lot of, like, the underclassmen don't, you don't really get to see in a lot of shows, you know? So I feel like this is an asset to really see, like, the department as a whole and really see all the talent we have. So I feel like this is an opportunity to watch it virtually at your home while seeing the talent that runs in our schools. So I think that's really cool. I know from what Joseph said, like this is like a student written and like acted show. It's so, like, you're not gonna see like this show anywhere else. Like you can definitely see like um like or other productions, like, you know, different schools and in different formats. But, like this is the only place you'll get to see Skits and Giggles. This Skits and Giggles is probably the most, it's like, it's the most creative that students are allowed to be. And I think that's awesome because we're just, we have full, almost full creative reign over what we're doing and how we're doing it. And I think it's really cool. And I just wanna say thank you guys all for coming to discuss the uh, skits and giggles today. And to everyone watching this, I hope you guys all come, well, don't come and see, but watch safely from your house, uh, Skits and Giggles season three. So thank you for watching everyone.